All right, well, welcome to the virtual preview for engineering here at CSU. Uh, hopefully you can hear me, get this working out pretty well. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dr. Blauk. Uh, I am the Director of Engineering here at Charleston Southern University. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. Uh, I have a PhD in engineering from Penn State University. Uh, I got my master's from Carnegie Mellon University. I've been here at CSU since 2007, uh, so that's about 13 years. And uh, I always wanted to teach at a Christian university. And uh, I got an opportunity 13 years ago to come down here, teach engineering at a Christian university. And I'm pretty excited about what's going on here with engineering. Um, tell you more about that in a few minutes. Um, but let me um, just uh, welcome those of you that are watching live uh, during broadcast. Uh, also, this is going to be recorded. And it's going to be put up on the internet. So some of you may be watching this in the future. Uh, and so welcome to those of you that are watching this in the future. Uh, I have everybody muted to start with, uh, just to try to keep the um, noise down. Uh, there is a chat option in Zoom, if you're familiar with Zoom. So if you have questions as we go through, uh, you can type your question in the chat, and then I'll try to take a look at that later on and answer those questions. Uh, you can always, if you have questions afterwards, or if you're watching this um, at some later time online, uh, you can always email me. I'd be glad to answer whatever questions you have, uh, send you information, hook you up with other people. And uh, there's my email address at the bottom, ablauk at csuniv.edu. So that's the best way to get in touch with me if you have questions um, after this uh, preview session. So let's, um, let's start talking about engineering. This is supposed to be a, a preview of, of engineering uh, and engineering at CSU. So let me just go through some of these slides and talk about engineering, uh, what are some uh, different aspects of engineering, and then we'll talk about uh, CSU in particular and uh, what things we have available to you. What is engineering, in case you're not familiar with it? Um, somebody at some point maybe told you that you should do engineering um, or you're good at math and science and, and so I, I like engineering. I like playing with things. Uh, well, engineering is, is a lot of those things, but uh, more of the big picture, I would say engineering is you learn how things work, science. Uh, you learn a way of describing it, mathematics. And then you take that information and you use some judgment, ethical decisions, economical decisions, um, other forms of judgment to decide what to do with that information. What are you going to make? Uh, what technology are you going to develop? How are you going to develop it, uh, implement it, and so forth? I like the picture of the train engineer. Train engineer you might not think of as a real engineer, but a train engineer is a real engineer. An engineer needs to know how things work. They need to know how to problem solve. They need to know how to fix things when uh, problems arise. And uh, in the early days, those train engineers, they had to get those engines all the way across the United States. They had to fix bridges. They had to fix the train tracks. They had to fix the engine, the, the coaches, you name it. So they had to know a lot about how things worked and they had to do a lot of problem solving. So I think that's a good illustration of what a, uh, an engineer might be is. Uh, some of you are already familiar with engineering, and maybe you have a, a relative, somebody who's an electrical engineer or mechanical engineer. Uh, there's lots of branches in engineering, uh, civil, electrical, mechanical, chemical. Uh, basically, take any branch of science and put engineering after it, and do you have it. So biology, there's biological engineering. Chemistry, there's chemical engineering. Uh, different parts of physics, mechanical, electrical engineering. So the big branches would be civil, electrical, mechanical. Those would be the, the big branches, the ones where there's the most engineers involved. And uh, so those are the most popular ones. But think of a tree, uh, branches growing on a tree. They don't just go out, they also intertwine. And so there's a lot of overlap. Uh, you look on here, you see things such as aerospace and automotive. Uh, on the picture, it's under mechanical. 
but there's a lot of electrical stuff in aerospace. There's a lot of mechanical stuff in aerospace. There's civil parts in aerospace. So these, these disciplines are not distinct. There's a lot of overlap. And that's important to remember too, when you're getting into uh, the industry and getting a job, is if you have a mechanical degree, you're not just gonna do mechanical engineering stuff. You're gonna be doing lots of things. You're gonna do some business. You'll do some electrical, you'll do some programming. Um, you never know what you're going to get into. Uh, so here at CSU, uh, we have a general engineering program with concentrations because we think that center part, that engineering, that trunk is very important. And we want all our students to have a broad uh, background in engineering. We want everybody to have some mechanical, some civil, some electrical, some computer background so that when they get out into industry, they get into the workforce, uh, they're well prepared for whatever may come their way. Uh, speaking of jobs, uh, I got a master's from Carnegie Mellon University and then had to get a job. And uh, Carnegie Mellon's a pretty, pretty prestigious engineering school, but I had no idea what I was going to be doing for 40 hours a week uh, after I graduated and got a job. I'm like, all the problems in the back, all the problems are solved. Look in the back of the book and there's the answer. So what do you do for 40 hours a week? I don't know. Well, there's lots of things you do. You don't do problems that are like the book but you do problems. Uh, you might be designing, developing new products, things that have never existed before. Uh, just look at what you're looking at now, these iPads, laptops, cell phones. I mean, cell phones 10 years ago were a lot different than they are now. Uh, 20 years ago, just look at what technology was. Uh, there are a lot of things that exist now that were not even an imagination 20 years ago. Just think what's gonna be around 20 years from now. So design development's a big thing. Uh, production, construction, this stuff has to be created, uh, built, manufactured. There's a lot of engineering that goes into just the making of something. How are cell phones made? How are TVs made? How are cars made? Uh, the manufacturing process. Uh, testing operations, things have to run properly. Uh, I think everybody's probably sitting on a chair and I think you'd be very thankful that people tested, the engineers tested those chairs very well so that when you sit on them, they don't collapse. Um, or your computer lasts for several years before the keyboard starts breaking. Uh, sales support, uh, management, consulting, teaching. There's lots of different things that you might actually do once you get a job in engineering. So if you're worried about, well, I don't like doing the problems in the book and I don't wanna do that for the rest of my life, don't worry, that's not what you're gonna be doing uh, most of your time. Let's talk about uh, degrees just for a, a minute or two. Um, so you like engineering, you, you kind of like math, science, you like taking things apart, seeing how things work. Uh, well, it's great. Uh, there's a couple different types of degrees you can get. You can get an associate's degree, typically a two-year degree, uh, engineering technology degree, um, four-year degree, typically uh, two to four years, um, or you can get the uh, bachelor's of science engineering degree. Uh, which one's best depends on what you want to do. Uh, if you find out that you, you thought you were good at math, but you're not really good at math or you don't like doing math, um, an associate's or a technology degree would probably be the best degree for you. Uh, they're not very math intensive, um, but you can get an engineering degree. You can learn some of the concepts and so forth. Uh, but if you want to do a lot of uh, design uh, if you want to get a professional licensure, uh, then a bachelor's of science in engineering would definitely be the route that you want to take. Uh, that one is the math intensive degree. That's the one that you would get at, at Clemson. That's the one that we offer here at CSU. So again, if you want to be a professional engineer, licensed engineer, you need a BS in engineering degree. Uh, ABED is the organization that accredits schools. And uh, CSU, uh, we just started our engineering program uh, this year. And so in three years, we'll be having our first graduates. At that point, we'll be able to get accreditation. And I anticipate that going smoothly. And so the, our, our graduates then will be accredited. Our program will be accredited. So we will, we will get that accreditation as soon as we're able to. So those are different types of engineering degrees. Uh, again, depending on really the big difference is your math background and how, how well, how far you go with your math. Uh, Occupation-wise, obviously you can go further uh, if you have the 
bachelor's of science and engineering degree that gives you more opportunities to advance in the company. So let's talk about CSU. I've talked about engineering in general uh, for a little bit. Uh, so let's talk about CSU, preview day for CSU. So what do we have? Well, we actually do now have a four-year engineering program. Uh, two years ago, we didn't have it. Uh, this, and then a year ago, uh, we started working on the curriculum and developing it and got it passed. And so this year, 2019, 2020 is the first year implementation of our full bachelor's of science and engineering program. So we have our freshman class in here right now and those students are doing well, um, adjusting well to the uh, change in our instruction online this semester. Um, so what about CSU? Well, we are a, a Christian environment. That's a very important uh, Christian education. That's why I came down here. Uh, Christian faith is uh, integral to everything that goes on, to what we do, what we teach, uh, what we do at work. And so uh, you'll get that at CSU, uh, in your classrooms, outside the classrooms, and other places. We are a liberal arts education, which means you do have to take extra classes in uh, English, history. Uh, that's important because you don't want to be a... a there I call myself an engineering geek, where all you do is engineering stuff and you don't know anything about the world around you. Uh, we want to be well-educated uh, people. So you want to know what's going on, you know, in a history of things, uh, doing some work internationally. Maybe you're working with some companies in Mexico or over in Europe. Uh, you want to know some history of what's going on in, in Europe. Um, why are those countries the way they are, um, other languages and so forth. So that's a big part of CSU. We are definitely a small campus, small classes. Uh, if you're familiar with Clemson or USC or some of the other uh, bigger schools in the area, uh, an engineering class, you might have a lecture of 70 students or more. Um, faculty are, uh, teach a little bit and they do a lot of research. Uh, so you get to talk to them a little bit, but there's not a, a lot of interaction. It's just the nature of the school. Uh, here at CSU, uh, our engineering classes are right now 10, 15, our math classes, calculus classes are 10, 25, maybe at most. As you go to your upper level classes, you know, you're, you're 10 students in those classes. Um, so the class sizes are much smaller. Our faculty are, are full-time instructors. We are here because we want to teach. And so you can interrupt us as much as you want. You can see us in office hours as much as you want. Uh, we want you to stop by. We want you to to see us and ask questions. Uh, that's a big part of CSU is the interaction between the faculty and the students. And so you'll get that here. Uh, some students might be uh, intimidated because the faculty actually knows their name and we'll call you out when we see you walking around campus. We'll say, hey, Joe, how are you doing? I missed you in class on Wednesday. Everything going all right? Um, parents might like that. They want us to call them out, but you'll definitely get a lot of interaction with the faculty. I did mention about the program briefly. Um, it is a, a new program and it is centered around a general engineering degree. And so you will not get an engineering degree in, uh, you will not get a, an electrical engineering degree or a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, you will get a bachelor's of science in engineering degree. That is the degree that you will get. Uh, but we do have concentrations. And this is a common um, practice for smaller schools um, where they'll have a general engineering degree and then you'll have concentrations it just works better for a smaller school environment. Uh, so right now we have two concentrations. We have a computer concentration and an electrical concentration, uh, but we will in, in the next year, Lord willing, we'll be adding mechanical concentration and some other ones that we were thinking of adding are biomedical and maybe something along the lines of industrial or uh, systems engineering. But officially right now we have two computer concentration and electrical. And I'll talk more about that maybe a little bit later. Another big aspect of our program is the experiential learning uh, classes, labs, and projects. Uh, we don't want to be just lectures. We want students to, as much as possible, get their hands dirty and experience the things that we're talking about in class through labs, through projects, and different things like that. So our, our program is developed, designed around that. There are some new things coming on. 
Right now, I am the only engineering faculty here at CSU. We have a physicist, we have a bunch of mathematicians, uh, another uh, science faculty, uh, but I'm the only engineering faculty for now. But this fall, we have a second engineering faculty coming on board. Uh, he have a PhD in mechanical engineering, and he'll join our staff. And uh, so because we're adding a mechanical engineering faculty, we're gonna be able to add the mechanical concentration next year. Uh, the picture uh, shows you the backside of the science building. The, the building in the background you see is actually a new dorm building. Uh, that was uh, completed a year or two ago. Um, this, this construction is for a new science building. Uh, we've exceeded our capacity for our current science building. We need more space and we need room for the engineering program. So that construction is going on right now, should be done summer of 2021. And so uh, basically a little more than a year and a half from now, the building should be complete and we'll be able to move in there. And there will be space in there for uh, engineering project lab, uh, engineering uh, laboratory classroom offices and things like that. So we're excited about some new faculty coming on board and some new facilities as we get into year two next year of our program. Uh, just briefly to mention this, uh, this is what we've had for the last 13 years until this past year. Uh, we've had a cooperative degree program where you could come to CSU and you could spend three or more years here at CSU and then transfer to Clemson, USC and the Citadel uh, for two more years. It would take at least five years, five or six years. And when you're all done, you get an applied math degree from us and an engineering degree from the other school. Uh, we still have this program in place, although now that we have our own four-year engineering program, uh, we obviously would encourage students to stay here for four years and get their degree from us. Uh, but this is still an option that's available if students um, really wanted to go to another university. Um, as far as a general engineering degree compares to a concentration degree, what does the difference between that look like when you're looking for jobs? Okay, okay so, so looking for jobs, let me again mute everybody. When you're looking for a job as a, at an entry level, uh, companies will want to, you know, look for your, at your degree. So if it's a Boeing or Volvo or Bosch or some other engineering type company, and you're looking for an engineering employee, uh, you're, they're looking for an engineering degree. Um, they might be looking for an electrical engineer. So if they're looking for an electrical engineer, um, they would look for somebody with an electrical engineering degree or a, an engineering degree with electrical concentration would also work as well. So I don't think that the employer is going to make much of a, a distinction or care much about whether you have an electrical engineering degree or an engineering degree with electrical concentration. The employer is not going to care too much about that. Um, the fact is that you, you have an engineering degree, and if they're looking for some electrical background, you have that electrical background. Um, they'll bring you in for an interview, and they'll ask you questions, and really that's where you get to distinguish yourself as to how you handle yourself at the interview, how you respond to questions, your, your general knowledge. So degree-wise, I don't see it as being a, um, being a big deal. So this is a document that if, if you'd like a copy of this, send me an email. And then I can, um, I can send you a PDF of this. Uh, the first page talks a little bit about just our engineering program. The second page uh, gives a list of courses are required. Um, well, let me show you the, the bottom part here. So these are the courses. These are the engineering courses that all of our students will have to take. They'll take Intro to Engineering. Uh, Engineering graphics, which is a 3D modeling course. So it's more of a civil mechanical engineering type course, but everybody takes it. Uh, statics, again, more of a mechanical civil course, but all of our students will take it. Uh, digital systems, uh, where you learn about a basic digital logic, uh, the, the foundation for computer systems. And so all of our students will take that. Circuit analysis, uh, again, more about electrical engineering things. Everybody takes that. Embedded applications, that's sort of along the lines of robotics. All of our students will be taking that. Control systems, uh, how you control things. Uh, again, all of our students take that. Senior project, all of our students will take senior project. They'll take it together. 
Uh, there will be interdisciplinary projects. So there's not going to be an electrical engineering project or a mechanical project. There will be an engineering project all our students will be a part of. But then the concentrations, let me zoom back out there. And the concentrations are listed here. So if you do computer concentration, there's an electronics course, so you learn more about the electronic behavior for a computer. And then there's uh, some computer science courses, object-oriented computer architecture, applied networking. If you're doing electrical concentration, then you focus on electrical engineering. So there's four courses there that have to do with um, electrical um, topics. And then if you like a program plan, you're wondering what to be doing for four years, there's a page where it gives you a, a layout of sort of what you would be doing for each semester. And if you're more of a flowchart type person, the last page gives you a flowchart, shows you kind of semester by semester, the math, science, and engineering. So you'll see there's a lot of math. The tan boxes are your math and science courses. Or the green boxes are the engineering courses that everybody takes. And then the blue boxes are the concentration. Uh, you'll notice that the concentration courses don't start until your junior year. So again, I think it's important as we were developing this program that uh, students have an opportunity to see the different areas of engineering before they make a decision. And so you, you don't really have to decide which concentration you want to do until your junior year. You can see some of the mechanical, some of the electrical, some of the computer stuff, your freshman, sophomore year, and then make a decision. There was a question about um, uh, MATLAB or, or programming. Uh, there's lots of different software out there that engineers have to use. Uh, in electrical engineering, we use uh, national instruments, uh, multi-sim simulation, uh, industry standard uh, software. So you'll learn how to use that. Uh, you'll use it in class. Uh, the one mechanical course we use uh, MathCAD. Uh, MATLAB is also used in some of the uh, will be used in some of the upper level classes. So there's lots of different um, software that's used in engineering. You'll get familiar with those. Uh, there is a programming class that everybody has to take, procedural programming, and that is taught in C++. So you'll learn how to program in C++. And uh, that's helpful again for all engineers because you never know when you might need to do some programming. Also helps to reinforce logic, logical thinking. So let me um, open up the mic again and see if there's other questions that anybody might have. Dr. Box, this is Kimberly from the admissions office. Wait, One wait. of the questions that we get asked a lot in our office are what kinds of internships are available and what that looks like and how students go through that process. Would you mind maybe touching on that just for a minute? Sure. sure. So, so let me get rid of the echo. <laughs> okay. Uh, you may notice on the list of participants, there's a Deborah Blauk. Uh, that's my wife's account. So um, I like to know what I look like on the screen. So I actually have two screens up. So internships. Um, that's a good uh, question. So. We have a, a, a staff on campus which helps students line up internships and co-op opportunities. Um, for engineering, we didn't really have, um, we weren't seeking internships previously because we were shipping our students off. With the Applied Math Engineering Cooperative Program, we would get our students uh, through some basic engineering classes, and then they would transfer to Clemson or USC or the Citadel just about the time that they were getting the skills they needed to do internships. So now that we have a, a full four-year uh, engineering program, as we start working our way through the years, uh, we're going to be making more contacts with industry. Um, so that said, there are plenty of opportunities in the Charleston area. Uh, if you like big companies, Boeing, uh, 
and not just Boeing, but all the other supporting companies that uh, work with Boeing. Uh, there's automotive industry down here and Volvo and BMW. Uh, Bosch is a big mechanical company, does a lot of work with automotive as well. And then there's a lot of, of other companies. Uh, there's some that work with, um, with defense uh, there's a lot of just uh, other manufacturing companies, other uh, tech companies. So there are a lot of opportunities in the area, industry in the area where students could uh, get internships. Uh, like I said, right now, uh, we don't have a lot set up because we didn't have students ready to do it. Uh, but as we go forward in the next several years, we'll be working closely with the, um, the staff that handle the internships and co-ops, and we'll be developing much better, uh, much more relationships, many more relationships. So there are opportunities, there will be opportunities. Typically it's gonna be over the summer. Uh, the engineering program at pretty much any school is packed. So your fall and spring semesters are, are very busy uh, taking classes. So there's not really much room to do an internship during the fall or spring semester. Um, so typically the internships will be taken over the summer. <coughs> Other questions? Um, when we're graduating and we are going for like entry level job positions and we're getting ready for interviews, is there any form of like graduate setter set up to help students like prep for interviews, you know, learn what type of questions they're going to be answering, um, how they can best go about applying and looking for jobs, things like that? There is. Um, there's a couple of ways. We have a career service uh, center and they do a lot of work with students uh, while they're students and also as they're getting ready to uh, make their resume and to look for a job. Uh, we have career fairs. Um, there's opportunities where you can do practice interviews. Uh, in addition to that, in the engineering program, we have a, uh, an engineering seminar that students will take their, their senior year. And that seminar will help prep students. Uh, if, they're, if they wanna go to grad school, it'll help um, students be aware of what they need to do for grad school. If they want to go for a professional licensure, uh, they'll work with students there. Um, and also with uh, job uh, interviews, uh, prepping for that as well. So there's a, a number of opportunities, uh, ways that students can, can get some practice, either interviewing or somebody to look over their resume, help them develop their resume. So yeah, there's definitely uh, support for that on campus. Awesome. Well, we are um, just about out of time. Let me see if I can take you on a walk around just briefly. Uh, this is the physics lab um, that we have right now. And again, we're gonna be getting some new uh, labs as the that building, the new science building. Mm -hmm. uh, this is him walking it's around. This is, this is a lot. Completed. And so, uh, this is the science lab. If you look around, um, one of the things I like about a small university is whatever we have, students can play with. So this is a 3D printer that we have that's been used a lot. Uh, students put it together. Uh, they didn't design it, but they did build it. And uh, so we use it to print parts. Uh, we have an engineering graphics course, which does the 3D modeling. So in that course, you're going to be able to not only do the modeling, but you're also going to print out your parts. And you're going to find out that um, it looks good on the computer, but when you print it out, it doesn't look so good. And so you learn some of real engineering uh, troubleshooting there. Uh, as you take your classes, you're going to learn about all that stuff on the inside. There's motors, there's digital logic, there's analog power supplies, mechanical stuff, computer stuff, electrical stuff in there. You're going to learn how that stuff works as you take your engineering classes. Um, also, we have some new equipment over here that we got recently. We're using for electrical uh, courses primarily. There's a testing unit that we have from National Instruments where students can build their uh, circuits and test them, hooks up to a computer, so it's easy to collect data to uh, test things, simulate things. Uh, one of the new courses next year, our sophomore year, is a digital systems course. So we're going to be using this board. Students will be able to build some digital logic and test it. They're also gonna learn how to program an FPGA. And uh, that's something that's very common in most uh, computer type devices. So if you have a Stairmaster, a treadmill, um, or a remote control car, 
uh, lots of things like that will have something similar to or if not the same as an FPGA where the logic has been programmed into it. And so you learn how to use that and program it in that course. And then there's an upper level electrical engineering elective that's on communications, AMFM communications, satellite communications, things such as multiplexing and lots of other big words like that. Uh, there's a board here that we're going to be able to use to do some uh, hands-on experiments with that type of, of communication. And we got more toys on the way, again, as we uh, develop and uh, build our program over the next several years. So with that, let me um, wrap up again. For those of you that are watching live, thank you for joining in. Uh, for those of you that uh, are watching online in the future, uh, thanks for watching. Let me bring up the initial slide that I had at the beginning. Whoops. And let's share that. So again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, whether you're watching live or whether you watch at a later point, uh, please email me at ablauk at csuniv.edu, listed there at the bottom. And I'd love to get back to you and answer your questions and uh, help uh, guide you along your path. Uh, engineering is a very challenging field. Uh, CSU is a great school uh, for engineering. I'm excited about our program. Uh, hopefully it's right for you, uh, but either way, if you have questions, I'd love to help you out and help you decide what's the best degree to seek and best school to go to. So thank you again for joining and uh, hopefully I'll hear from some of you later.